praise God. Welcome to Just Praise Him. I uh, hope you have a good time today. I hope you're having a wonderful week. Uh, today's word is exciting, man. It's called Swing Your Sword. Uh, so let's get started, okay? Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, because, Father, you are a powerful God, Lord God. You've given us the sword of the Spirit to fight with, Lord God, and, and we thank you for that, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. All right, so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it it's called Swing Your Sword. <clears throat> it, it, it's easy to let life just happen to us when, when we've been through enough disappointment, people against us. Uh, over time, that can wear us down to, to where we lose our fight. We, we, we lose our passion. But, but you can't be passive and just... You know, take take whatever comes your way. We're in the middle of a fight. There are forces that are trying to keep you from your destiny. The scripture, the scripture says that God's word is a sword of the spirit. When you have his promises coming out of your mouth, you are swinging your sword. When you swing, God is in full fight, man. Uh, as long as... You're not pas you know, you're not passive. Uh, can't believe this happened. I, I never get any good breaks. I probably never get well. well the, the problem is that that your sword is in its sheath. It, it's not going to do any good. You have to get your sword out, Father. Thank you that no weapon formed against me will prosper. Thank you that that you being for me is more than the world being against me. You know, we, you, know you know what you just did, right? You, you swung your sword when, when you declare his promises. You know, when you declare his promises, angels go to work. Forces of darkness push back, but negative situations will turn around. Are you swinging your sword? You, you, you have... You have to initiate God's power. You, you can't sit back hoping all gets well, hoping all is good. You, you're in a battle, not with people. Okay? The, the scripture says you're fighting spirits without bodies. The, there's an unseen realm where, where forces are trying to keep you from your purpose. You can't fight in an unseen enemy with physical weapons. You, you have to use the sword of the spirit and, and God's word coming out of your mouth is one of your most powerful weapons. When you're waiting on God to help you, maybe God is waiting on you to, to get your sword out. You have to swing that sword. Father, you, you said, because I keep you first place, you will crown my efforts with success. Thank you that my business is taking off, that my gifts are coming out to the fold, that, 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 that you're opening doors that no person can close. That's not just being positive. That, that's, that's swinging your sword. Father, you said no good thing would you withhold because I walk uprightly. You said you, you'd give me the desires of my heart. So, Father, thank you. Now, don't accept defeat. Don't accept mediocrity, dysfunction. Uh, become, you know, don't, don't let it become normal to, to where you think it's just like my lot in life. Get your sword out. Start declaring what God says about you. Start expecting his favor. Start thanking him. Praising him when, when nothing is turning around. I mean, that's what faith is all about. When, when you start swinging your sword, God will make things happen that, well, that, that simply that you couldn't make happen. He'll, he'll fight for you, but you have to activate his power. You, you have to activate the miracle, activate the breakthrough. You might say, I, I this, but nothing happened. Well, just keep doing it. Th things are happening in the unseen realm. God is working. You may not see it, 
But God is changing everything in your favor. Consistency is the key. Keep swinging that sword. Keep declaring that victory. What's holding you back? Are, are, are there areas that, that, that you become complacent in? Uh, you're just accepting it? You know, waiting on God to do something? When in fact, God is waiting on you. Get your sword out. Start believing again. Start, start expecting his favor. Start declaring what he says about you. The, the scripture says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am well off. Don't sit around in, in weakness. Don't, don't, don't just talk about how bad life is. You know, the, the defeat brings more defeat. Talk about the weakness will make you weak. Okay. God has given you a sword that can break powers that, that, are, that are holding you back. You have a sword that can unleash your dreams, unlock your potential, thrust you to a new level. Take it out of a sheath and, and start swinging it. I'm blessed. I'm prosperous. I'm healthy, strong, forgiven, favored. I am more than a conqueror. You keep swinging at your sword like that and you'll, you'll, you'll see God do things that, that you couldn't do. Favor, breakthroughs, new levels of your destiny. You might be thinking, you know, you're kind of discouraged because you're under attack. Well, you're not under attack. You're in a battle. Uh, under attack implies that I'm being bombarded. It's not fair. I'm outnumbered. You're not outnumbered. You and God are the majority, man. You have the most powerful force in the universe on your side. But defeated mindset is, is not going to, you know, move you forward. Think, thinking that you are shortchanged, thinking that you're at a disadvantage, will only keep you from your destiny. The reason you have these challenges is because there's something amazing in front of you. The enemy, man, he, he wouldn't be fighting you if you didn't have like greatness in you. Uh, he wouldn't waste his time if he didn't know that you were going to, you know, to take new ground for the kingdom. He can sense you're a threat. That's why he's coming after you. Don't fall apart. Get your sword out. Start swinging. Start declaring. Start speaking his promises. This too shall pass. What was meant for my harm, I know God is turning for my good. Turning for my advantage. What he started in my life, he is going to finish. God promised the Israelites that he would give them the land of Canaan. Well, that was a promised land. But he said, you have to go in and possess the land. Now, the problem was there were giants living there, the, the, the people that were huge. Instead of taking their swords out, going in and, you know, going in knowing that God would give them the victory, they were intimidated by the opposition. They, they looked at how big and how large they were and the, the, how they didn't have a chance. They, they, they turned around and, 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 and went back in, in the desert and never, man, they, they just, just couldn't do it. God could have given them the land without a fight. He, he could have cleared out the enemy and, and handed them, you know, without opposition. But most of the time, God will say, I will give you the healing, but you have to fight for it. If you'll not be passive, if you'll start swinging. God asked the Israelites, how long will, will you wait till you possess the land that I've given you? It wasn't necessarily up to God. You initiate the blessing, the favor, the, the healing. How, how long are, are, are you going to wait to go after what God has put in your heart? The, the, those giants may, may look big, but 
they're no match for our God. You, you'll be amazed in the, the, at, at what will happen when you start swinging your sword. Hebrew says God's word is alive and full of power, sharper than any two-edged sword. His promise coming out of your mouth will, will part the Red Seas, will, will break addictions, will, will defeat the sicknesses, will open doors you've never dreamed would open. Are you declaring what God says about you? Are you possessing your land, going after what he put in your heart, dreaming big? God wants to take you where no one in your family has gone. He has influence, opportunity, favor like you've never seen. You wouldn't be hearing this if there wasn't something bigger, something better coming your way. But but with those new levels, there will be new devils. Now, there will be giants in our land, uh, oppositions, you know, th things you don't understand, things that are, are not fair, pe people that, that, that should be, you know, for you that, that are against you. You don't win these battles with your skill and your strength. It's a spiritual battle. They are one with the sword of the spirit, with declaring God's promises, with standing in faith, unwavered and unmoved. How long will you, will you wait till you possess your healing, your freedom, your peace, your, your abundance? Start swinging your sword. It's very powerful when, when, when you have God's promises coming out of your mouth. The scripture says God watches over his word to perform it. He's not, oblig he's not obligated to bring back what we say, but he is obligated to bring to pass what he says. Th that's why it's so important to, to get into an agreement with God. Speak what he says about you, not, not how you feel, not, not how big the problem is, not, 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 not how it's never going to work out. Speak victory. Speak abundance. Speak healing. You may be fighting a, a, a battle in your health, your finance, or your relationship. The, the good news is you have a weapon. Get your sword out. I'm healthy. I'm whole. I'm strong. I, I, I will run and not be weary. I, I will walk and not faint. If you're struggling in your finances, instead of complaining, man, get your sword out. Lord, you promised whatever I touch will prosper and succeed. Thank you that my cup will run and run runs over that. Man, that, that I will have a bountiful year. I, I walk under the, the commanded blessings. Good breaks and opportunities and resources. The right people are chasing me down. Now, you may not see anything happening, but as you keep swinging that sword... Behind the scenes, things are changing. God is lining up the right people, moving out the, the, the wrong people. Opportunities are coming, healing, breakthroughs. He watches over his word to perform it. Pay, pay attention to, to what's coming out of your mouth. Are, are you speaking the problem or are you speaking the promises? Or are you... Talking to God about how big your problems are? Or are you talking to your problem about how big God is? How, how many battles are we not winning because our sword is in our sheaths? We have it. But we're not swinging it. We're not activating God's power, his favors, his healing. Get, get that sword out. Man, we're in a battle. There are giants on the land. God promised you the victory. But, but you can't be passive. Hope it happened, you know. You, you can't say, God, if, if God wants me to have it, he'll, he'll give it to me. No, no. He's waiting on you to possess it. If you're... If you start swinging your sword, 
then he'll step in and help you accomplish what you can't accomplish on your own. When David went out to face Goliath before he ever slung a rock, he got his sword out. Now, he, he looked at, at Goliath and, and said, Today, I will defeat you and feed your head to the birds of the air. He, he declared his victory. He, he declared God's favor. He, he could have said, God, why is this giant in my path? I mean, he's twice my size. I don't have a, you know, I don't have the training. This is not fair. Now, David knew how to swing his sword. He went out and slung that rock, hitting Goliath in the forehead, knocking him out. If, if you'll swing your sword, God will direct the rock. If you declare victory, he'll bring down the giants. Years ago, I, I was watching this boxing match. Uh, it was it was it was like the two best boxers in the world, and, uh, heavyweight boxers, and uh, they were scheduled for a twelve round fight. Now, there had been all this hype leading up to it. Uh, the opening bell finally rang, and, and and we expected this, you know, to be an exciting, high energy match, you know. But 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 the boxer that that was uh, favored, you know, hardly threw any punches. Now, first round, he was very passive, just playing defense, trying to stay away from his opponent, almost like he was scared. The second round, it was the same way. Third round, fourth round. In the fifth round, he got knocked out. It was a huge, huge upset. He told, he, 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 he told everybody afterwards, his strategy was to be defensive for the first five rounds, save save all his energy, you know, not throwing any punches. But So in the later rounds, when the other boxer was tired, he, he would have the advantage. Well, the problem was he never made the later rounds. You know, are you being passive? Just, just taking what comes your way? You're in a fight. There are forces that, that don't want you to succeed. They're after your health, your finances, your children. You can't stay on the defensive and live in victory. You have to start throwing some punches. Praying is important. You know, praying is important, but you don't, you know, you, you need to do more than pray. You need to get your sword out. Start declaring what God said. If you start swinging your sword, not, not talking about the problem, but, but talking about the promises, not, not wishing things would change, but declaring God's favor, speaking strength when, when, when you feel weak, speaking abundance when, when, when you're seeking lack or, or when you're seeing lack, when, speaking new levels when you feel stuck and, and, and you may have big problems coming your way today, but let me remind you, we, we serve a big God. The, the, the sword he's giving you is, is sharper and more powerful than, than any force that's trying to stop you. Many, ha many of you have, have been using your sword. You, you've been faithful. you swing, swinging in depression until, it, you know, the joy of the Lord is your strength, you know. Sw swinging in the face of illnesses by, by, by his stripes, I am healed. So swinging in the middle of the pandemic, Father, you said even in famine, the righteous will have more than enough. Well, get ready. Giants are, are, are about to come down. Your health is about to turn around. That child is about to get back home. New doors are, are, are to open. The family issue is about to be resolved, man. It, it, it's it's going to be unusual, uncommon. Something better than, than you were expecting. God sees your faithfulness. He hears you bringing his word back to him. Not complaining, but speaking the promises. He's, he's about to watch over his word to perform it. He, he's, when you swing your sword, God goes to work. He, he won't just... You know, he just won't bring it out. 
he exceeds your expectations. The scripture says he'll make a river in the desert. He'll, he'll take five loaves and feed 5,000. He'll part the Red Sea. He'll, he'll heal you from the cancer. I, I'm asking you to get your sword out. Complaining doesn't, doesn't get his attention. Begging doesn't cause him to act. Yes, yes, he's concerned about your needs, but he's moved by our faith. Joshua chapter, uh, I think, 10, 5 says that uh, the kings had joined, um, had joined together to come against Joshua and the Israelites. They were about to attack the city of Gibeon, and, and uh, these, these were Joshua's friends. The Gibeon king sent messages, messengers to, to, to Joshua saying, please come and, and reach us. And uh, what's interesting is that there's five kings that they, they, they didn't even like each other, man. They, they, they just, but they got together because of Joshua, okay? They, 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 they wanted to put down Joshua. Now, some people will, will, will be so against you, I mean, They'll, they'll join forces and in, in, in their enemies to, to try to make you look bad. Don't worry. They, they can't stand against our God. They, they can't come against you, and, and they, they, they couldn't come against Joshua. They had, they had so many people. Surely he would back down. They, they didn't know Joshua. Joshua was a warrior. He, he got his men together, and, and they hurried down to Gibeon with their swords drawn. When the enemy... When, when the enemy's army saw that, that he was coming, that well, they panicked and got confused. Joshua and his men started defeating them, left and right. Some of them oh, ran into the into the battle trying to escape. They they would have gotten away, but God had sent a huge hailstorm. Now hail, I, I can only imagine the, the size of of a baseball just raining down from the heavens. The scripture says the hail destroyed more of the enemy troops than Joshua and, and his men did with the sword. God was showing us if, if you'll swing your sword, then God will throw his hail. If you will speak his promises, God will, will make things happen that you couldn't make happen. God is waiting on you to swing your sword. When you have a, his word coming out of your mouth, when, when you're declaring his promises, that, then he will step in and do what he can do, okay? Swing your sword and, and you'll defeat the giants much bigger. Swing your sword and, and doors will open that you could never open. Swing your sword and you'll beat the depression. You'll see those dreams come to pass. God, 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 God. God has the hailstorm. He has his favor. He has his healing. He has the abundance. Just waiting on you to get your sword out. So get your sword out. Get your sword out and just be powerful. My God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for this moment. Pray with me. Father, I come before you. I know that Jesus went to the cross, died for my sins. And I believe, Lord God, that you raised him from the dead. According to your word, I am saved. I am rescued. I am redeemed. Lord, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. All right, God bless you, and I'll see you next week.